Hello and welcome to High Energy Education. My name is Tim and in this episode we are going to talk about lectins. Have you heard of lectins? Lectins are plant proteins and oh boy, oh boy. By the way, if you want to improve your sleep, nutritional intake, reduce inflammation, get rid of brain fog and get rid of those feelings of low motivation, being fatigued, having no drive, no libido, having to be jacked up on coffee all the time to at least be able to work. Well, if you are one of these people, you probably have problems with your cellular and your metabolic health. And high energy education is exactly for you. We give you the knowledge to fix that. So consider subscribing. Lectins are plant proteins which are found in legumes and grains such as tomatoes, potatoes, peanuts, uh, beans, rice. And these lectins are very, very interesting because they mimic our normal proteins very, very closely and they are not digestible, okay? So they can resist our salivatory enzymes and our digestive enzymes and bind to carbohydrates and just enter our digestive tract. Now they are designed in a way that glycoproteins on the cell membranes of our cells, for example in the intestinal tract, they bind with lectins, with those proteins. So in other words, lectins directly bind with human cells and they are not digested. And now the crazy thing is, they can permeate the gut and enter the bloodstream. Yeah, there have been studies which show that you have a high lectin concentration in your blood serum after the ingestion of 200 milligrams of peanuts. Now you can see the graph over here, which is really concerning because what are those lectins doing in your blood well they're just traveling all around your body and they might also cross your blood brain barrier and go directly into your brain these lectins are so similar to our normal proteins that our immune system gets confused and this is a very very interesting point now listen closely your immune system scans your body yeah all the time scans everything in your blood scans the proteins mm, enemy no friend yes okay i go and if they see lectins and they kill those lectins because they don't belong there, yeah, they will also be more aggressive against just normal proteins and thus normal cells because these lectins are so similar to normal proteins. So what you get? Well, exactly, autoimmune disease, autoimmune conditions. It's very, very interesting studies have been done to show that lectins can cause your immune system to be so jacked up and to not be able to differentiate between a lectin protein and a normal protein so that they kill normal cells. Yeah? For example, they attack your thyroid or your skin tissue and you get autoimmune disease. Studies have also proven that lectins can travel upwards of the vagus nerve in your stomach and they travel upwards and then they cross the blood brain barrier and directly enter your brain where they have been related to Parkinson's disease. My studies have shown lectins to cause major anxiety attacks in the mice when they were fed with lectins. Lectins also stimulate the insulin receptor causing increased fat storage. And they further you getting fat and eating more because lectins can bind to the leptin receptor which um, promotes satiety. satiety. So you will just eat more. And lectin also can bind to mast cells in your stomach and trigger those to produce histamine, okay? So more histamine can be difficult, yeah? You can be allergic against that, yeah? You can react against that. But it also increases your overall acidity in the stomach and in your system, which a lot of people are acidic and there's a condition called metabolic acidosis, which can be not really dangerous, but definitely performance hindering and can be dangerous over the long term because then your body needs to drag for example calcium ions out of your bone to balance the ph so now the big theory behind lectins is that lectins are really another plant defense mechanism so plants have co-evolved with us to kind of defend themselves against being eaten right they can't run away like animals so they need to develop other things, yeah, other phytochemicals in order to defend themselves from being eaten. Yeah, we have talked about that a lot already. I think it's a very interesting hypothesis and I think it's very true. And more and more research is done about that. For example, we have this whole debate about sulforaphane, right? You have like broccoli sprouts and all these kind of things which are so healthy because they contain sulforaphane. Well, turns out sulforaphane is like a booby trap, okay? So when you 
heat that broccoli sprouts, the cell wall of the broccoli gets destroyed and thus an enzyme and a precursor are combined to even create sulforaphane, which is highly, highly oxidative. So you ingest it into your body and your body says, what the hell, this is a crazy stressor. Um, similar to polyphenols out of coffee and then it has to detox that and in that detox process the NRF2 pathway is being triggered and thus you produce glutathione which is the body's chief antioxidant. Now do you need sulforaphane's crazy oxidative properties to produce glutathione? No you don't. You can also just do a cold shower, do an exercise routine and you will also trigger glutathione production. Okay. So you want to have highly radical oxidative damaging sulforaphane in your body? I don't think so, okay? But back to lectins. Lectins are also one of these interesting plant defense mechanisms because they are mimicking proteins so perfectly they kind of trigger our immune system to attack our own cells and they also travel on the vagus nerve into the brain causing all sorts of weird issues and it's really questionable if lectins really should be consumed at all. Now the problem here is that lectins can't be just cooked away yeah? and we really have lost the art of making food yeah, to get rid of lectins. In the past people have soaked their beans and soaked their rice for 24 hours, changed the water two three times and this gets rid of lectins. So I highly recommend if you eat beans, rice, potatoes, you need to soak them and you need to make sure you get rid of the lectins. Okay? So, Besides soaking, let me give you some other things you can do in order to get rid of the lectins. One, fermentation. Yeah, if you ferment stuff, you will get rid of the lectins. Why do we ferment stuff? Why do traditions ferment stuff? Well, it's not only healthy for your gut, yeah, but it also gets rid of the toxic lectins. Number two, peel and get rid of the seeds. For example, tomatoes. Yeah, you should peel the tomato skin and get rid of the, and get rid of the seeds, and you will have killed off or just thrown away the majority of the lectin containing parts of the tomato. Now the third thing, it's gonna be a little bit controversial but it's very very true in my opinion. Um, if you eat rice for example or bread, go with the refined version yeah, because the full corn rice, yeah, the brown rice, what is happening? Well the brown shell of the rice is full of lectins. The lectins are in the shell, yeah? And when you go back to the past, the white rice was always reserved for the elites, for the monarchs, for the king, and the peasants, they were eating the brown rice, yeah? And now we kind of have twisted that, so people eat brown rice and think it's healthy because it contains more fiber, uh, but they don't know that it contains a lot of lectins, and they're just screwing themselves up because of that. And the last tip I wanna give you here is a really, really, really great thing. And this is a pressure cooker. If you can get a pressure cooker, the pressure cooker is able to get rid of most lectins, especially in beans and potatoes. Um, with rice, you have a different problem. Um, but if you combine rinsing with water for 24 hours, 12 hours, yeah, changing the water two, three times, if you can do that, and then using a pressure cooker, you are going to have a way better and more healthier time consuming beans, rice, rice potatoes, and these kind of things than if you just eat them like that. All right, I'm signing off for today. Please click the like button for me if you found that information helpful. I think lectins are a very, very interesting topic and I will further do research and shoot more videos on lectins because especially for vegans and vegetarians, this is an interesting topic because you guys eat a lot of veggies. Thus, you eat a lot of things which contain histamine and lectins, yeah? So you need to be careful about that and maybe it's not so healthy for you, yeah? Um, studies kind of conclude in that direction. So if you found the video helpful, please leave a like for me here. Please subscribe so you never ever miss another episode. And if you want to also check out our Instagram page, it's high energy education. You find live streams, more videos, answer questions. You can DM me, DM me directly. And you can also visit our website. It's highenergynutrition.com where you find the free metabolic guide. To download it for free, read it through and it's gonna introduce you to the topic of metabolic health. And alone this, alone the topic of metabolic health, getting an introduction in that will really boost your knowledge and will put you ahead of the curve because most people, they don't even know that a thing which is called metabolic health is even out there. All right, that's it for today. I hope to see you in the next episode. Stick with me here and there in the outro card. You see no uh, more episodes to watch. Get informed. If you have any questions, comment them down below and then I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.